we went from, according to, to the PIT, we went from 80 um, homeless individuals in, in 2020 to uh, 37 in 2023. Um, I, I think it can be said that every city is going to be approaching homelessness uh, and the unhoused population differently. And I don't think one solution for one city across the board is going to work. It's the same as you know, some of these housing legislations that we're seeing at the state level. It's not the same for every city. You have to take a lot into, um, into account when you're doing your planning around that. So I can say that Sergeant Peart does know every one of our unhoused population by name and history and backstory and the school they went to and what city they came from. He acts as a communication and a liaison for sometimes uh, family members outside of California that want to send supplies or phones or whatever to their loved ones. Okay. Um, for instance, in Antioch, they passed um, the Homeless Prevention Act. Um, they've passed anti-harassment and they will pass just cause evictions because unfortunately people are being evicted left and right, which is adding to the homeless population. So we want to stop home, you know, people from becoming homeless in addition to getting people off the streets. So the city has to step up. Each city needs to step up, create ordinances that will protect tenants because there's really no protection for tenants that AB 1482, they find loopholes around that. It's not doing its thing. And that's why Governor Newsom passed the SB 567 Anti-Homelessness Prevention Act into law just days ago um, because we need stronger protections for tenants. In Brentwood, we do have um, a pretty strong affordable housing program. Um, we've got people on the wait list. Unfortunately, I wish we could take care of everyone. But we as a council, the current council, decided a couple of big things that are helping us with those numbers increasing. And one of them is that we got rid of in lieu fees, which basically means that a developer coming into our city and, and building a development of housing is not able to anymore buy their way out of uh, building affordable housing. We are focusing on inclusionary specifically. Um, previously, the in lieu fees would go towards, for example, programs for first time home buyers, not necessarily affordable programs. So that's one part of it. The other part of the same kind of hand in hand uh, approach is that we've raised our inclusionary percentage. So at one point it was 2% in our city. Uh, at one point I think it was even zero. We have housing developments, um, some of them are even senior focused without one single unit of affordable housing within because of the in lieu fees, because of previous inclusionary percentages. So now we are at 13%, we've got no in lieu fees, and so together we're hoping that those two things are gonna help us to increase the units for, of affordable housing within the city limits. Um, the misconception is, is that people made bad decisions, people didn't spend their money wisely, uh, people are drug addicts, alcoholics, things like that, but they don't understand that sickness happens, loss of job happens, there's so many factors in everyone living on the street they're not there by choice. There are people who actually work and make substantial amounts of money, but they cannot literally afford to live where they work or place a roof over their head. They may have credit challenges. There's all these different factors that create homelessness for people who actually have jobs. Now, now police response to the unhoused population is not going to work for every city. In Brentwood, we're having some success with it. Um, again, it takes oftentimes several, several times for someone to accept help. And we know that that's like statistically true across the board and Sergeant Peart has talked about that. It, you know, it takes sometimes eight times of offering help and, and getting someone connected to 211 and any kind of resources that are available before that person is ready and willing and able um, to accept the help. And so that's a big part of it. Um, like they were saying, it, it's not just, oh, well here, here's a house for you, go live your life. No, you know, you have to, people need to understand that living on the street is extremely traumatic. It's very traumatic just to know that you're going to live on the street. So actually going through it is like an everyday trauma. So people need to heal, people need counseling, people need help, they need all kinds of things to acclimate them back into being into the normal life that they once had. So I think a continued help for that person as a whole not just giving them a roof and then saying, okay, now go live your life.